And up next, we have the king of the hour, my very special love, art on the walls, poetry on the mic. Let's welcome up June Stratix! I didn't really prepare anything. Sure. Because I was painting until yesterday. Um, so I'm going to read some poetry. Uh, really quick, huge shout out to Abby. Yeah. She made it happen. Um, and to Alex, obviously. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read some poetry. I'll start with one talking about pigments. Quinacridone fuchsia. It's my favorite color, but your quality surpasses your charm. I hope I die before I watch the great apes go extinct because I saw us in the mirror, two bonobos settling who gets the last bite of honeysuckle devotion, where yesterday I was a burning hot chimpanzee, prowling with my first human baby, sick on dominance. Maybe it was me, leaking the sweet sour scent of schizophrenia, clenching my teeth, bearing down on my work through the fever, skinning the raccoon, sabotaging the back of your parents' gray pickup with the Alzarian crimson, fiending for my own extinction, dipping my quill in the ooze off the tailgate, painting a bouquet of sunset zinnias on the car paint, with petals that spelled out, I mourn your absence, that I prefer you unsmiling on my red carpet, tomorrow with your face buried in the wool of me, stained with the heat of my heart, forgetting now five mistakes I should still make, monthly dancing through five rings of fire for five days straight, you take it all on the chin and you wear it red. I don't know what to read. Um, so I stole a lot of stories from my dad. He's here. <laughs> I stole them and I plagiarized them and now they're in poetry. Um, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Let's see, where is it? Um, 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 um. Let's find it. Oh, actually, here's one also about my dad. It's different, though. I didn't steal this one. He did it. <laughs> this one's called Peanut Butter Cup. My father is not a dentist, but if he was one, he would take it very seriously. Instead, my father shares wisdom like candy. Says, if you want to remember, it will always be best to write it down. Wrappers and slips of paper find their way in and out of lives, so he builds a book into the beams of our house, pours tons of concrete on top of his childhood memories, holds a bick on his brake and sharpies and sledgehammers otherwise, builds our home out of nothing, his brain up from nothing. He puts my index finger up to his gum and says, can you feel the pulsing nerve? This is what happens when they take it. He holds the collection bill and says, this is how they get it out of you. Okay, here are the stories I stole from my father's childhood. Um, <laughs> what the hog had learned the hippies' hybrid children. There were no proverbs, just facts. Guns are not enough to kill what throat you should have slit, but you were two years too late. Sorry, you wanted me to take my birth control. <laughs> <laughs> not doing that. <laughs> what the hog had learned the hippies' hybrid children. There were no proverbs, just facts. Guns are not enough to kill what throat you should have slit, but you were two years too late. Let the swine go grow fat and adored. As a child, you can learn to love an animal that was born for the slaughter. When a beast is betrayed, the vengeance is not violence, it is the appendage you cut off yourself by virtue of feeding hungry offspring. It was accidental voyeurism. 
Two pairs of young eyes watching the execution, drawn all out all night to become mercy killing, became karma. There were no true farmers, just hippies in the cocaine meadows with moonshine revolvers. In death, a boar will outsmart the arrogant who drug him by his feet into the rafters, hoping to scald and scrape him smooth. He weighed plenty, enough to break the beams in the handmade slaughterhouse, releasing his body into the 50-gallon drum of boiling water, washing the feet and faces of the men who murdered him. Grateful for six months, they ate no roadkill raccoons and hunted no squirrels. In the absence of the pig that you love, there is the feeling of remembering it. Yeah. And this is another one I stole. It's not gluttony if our hands are dirty. Einstein of the backwoods real estate, you collect drive sea horses and carvings of owls now. Black, blue, and red mold does not deter a swarm of the tiny spiders with no names from creating a community within your home. I pathologize your clogged drain ecosystem. Stand around with this familiar assembly of crude Renaissance men. We used to eat off paper plates where the street lights flicker, but I've learned to alienate my white trash roots. The past whispers allow the present to be tidy, even if it is pretentious. <laughs> Willfully forget a past generation of hedonists that devoured sawed off chunks of deer roasted whole. No utensils but their buck knives and fingers. How else to know the color of the meat besides to cut it open? Uncle Larry, who died in diapers, was there. Also ate with unwashed hands and rubbed the grease onto his forearms shared joint after joint after joint, helped raise a bundle of boys who tolerate life but appreciate warmth. You alone live to wake early in the morning to split the wood. Um, I was really focused on the art so, unless. So good. Thank you. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> um, here's a love poem to a friend. Balm for my soul. You are the correct thesaurus. I know because I chose you. Kept you in my back pocket, honey, lemon cake, South City pipe dream. You're away and I fall asleep in clean sheets, but the time I spend with you is the same portion of time life feels plentiful. I've been appointed by God for a purpose that is truly fulfilling, and that is being adored by you. If you became close, I would never leave you. Take space walking backwards, looking at your sunset face, never turning around to the sound of sirens. Your essence cradles me like the chandelier at the hardware store. It is both nostalgic and abundant with possibilities. I shun sleep so I can spend more minutes sending a poem in text about how much I love you. You are the writer in my head that whispers little words out my mouth that are the reassurance that this is the correct life to live. And it is the correct life because you are apart from me as much as you are a part of me, which is totally. My greatest pleasure is sacrificial. I would never hide my tender from the cats looking through the ketamine window. These genes won't just cling to ass for faith's sake, but for the fae they paid out to send the right message. There's sex in my hips, DMT in my piss. You may want it, but there are no congratulations checks for me for giving it. I got to know her, so I wanted to fuck the vape queen. She just wanted to chew on something of mine pierced. Gave me the cash for the needles and a little extra for the jewelry. Swallowed everything from the bikini barista but still wouldn't eat me. Told me I'm a good lover for a dead thing because my rhythm gives life. I let her watch me clap and bounce up and down. Keep the cadence in my backstroke after peeling off the wet swimsuit and abandoning it in sand. After going barbaric, 
tearing at rainbow trout and building her another fire. I open my chest to soothe her with the meter of my heart. I ask again, where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? I will kiss you better. The other whispers, kitten, know where your lips could reach. That's for if you've ever been gay and in love with your best friend, um, don't do it. Uh, this one's called Body Reserved for Sharp Things. Slash, there are little bugs they crush to make the Skittles red. <laughs> My stomach empty in anticipation for someone to be there. I've done anal, but I've never done poppers. Have you ever seen a junkie that was so beautiful you considered crawling into the slush for them? I want the flesh of his flesh to fill the weeping hole inside me. Maybe if they were lucky, when the frostbite came and went and came and went, I would lay there, NyQuil wearing off, using my body to shield you of the sounds that may disturb you. I think I'd be loved enough to fill the overflow lot of the funeral home. And if I died near them because I am romantic, they might be commissioned to sing opera at my memorial. It would be poetic injustice for anyone else to get inspired off my unembalmed body, melted and finally now imperfect for the first time ever. There might be a film of the last time you saw my face cascading over every moment you walked through, every painting I threw out and every one you kept hanging on your wall. I wonder if you've loved anyone besides me. And if I have loved anyone besides me, I guess being beautiful, it was never enough. I don't even defrost the car, let alone your body, which rides for free. Abalone on roller skates. Don't be embarrassed that I am always wearing a helmet and condoms. Sure, I dream about dying, but I don't want to do it yet. story that is true that my family knows about. Uh, <laughs> it's cruder than it should be <laughs> for the context. A time I didn't have leg hair to crawl through, when two fingers took none of my virginity but the red nail thrust through my foot didn't wear a condom. Thank God for tetanus shots. I've been shaving my legs with rusty razors for years been carried the sacrificial lamb to the white bird wounded tent, laying in bed next to a bad trip, smothering our fear in peaches and tapestries. But you sure are an expert in band-aids and being easy on the eyes. Look at how good of a brother I have. He is strong enough to carry me to the dove sanctuary. I'm not even crying because he can do a backflip and never let go of my hand because he can move in with the real estate agent and go on vacation to Hawaii, and all I remember is I loved how playful the demons were when he was still around. Toothbrushes and deodorant were not of our childhood. I will trust your orangutan aroma and clean the little bubbler filled with black tar, just as you clean the wax from my ears and the blood from my nostrils. Fresh from the dryer, bodies are red, hot, and stacked upon themselves in play. We share one glowing promise of warmth, humid and sticky from innocent indulgence of candy for dinner. Now, if someone could teach us how to clean up. Yeah. Woo! Um, I wonder if I even have any more poems. Um, Sorry, give me a second. Can someone else talk while I'm looking? No. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> well, now I have to end on a high note. I can't just, like, linger here and then go away. Um, <laughs> what about that one with yeah, that tree yeah, tunnel thingy box? Oh, the, you, I know you like that one. Yes. Uh, fuck, where is it? It's That's Dwayne's favorite. Um, well, it's one of my many favorites. Oh, and it's right here. This one is called Hoarders. 
The soft undercoat of the crow's feathers collects in the spider's web. I find it easy to keep things I don't have a use for, like affection for people who don't care for me. I get so excited at running towards a light before I realize the only thing at the end of the tunnel is a train. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is newer. I haven't written in a minute. New ish, new enough. I love you, therefore, I want me to be happy. The smoky quartz you didn't know, how I pushed back onto your ring finger after I painted your nails and rubbed the lotion into your knuckles. I unfurled your layers. But you went home when it was sunny, so for two years I searched metaphysical shops for a man named Peter because he moved a pen like you, breathed like you, brushed his chin against my neck and turned with big shy pupils and ran to the ocean to show me how waves crash. To reassure me it meant nothing, that every pole was punctuated with a returning, with a smoothing of shelter. When I was landlocked for the first time since infancy, I found your television under a lily pad. I found myself at the bottom of the lake looking up, in the bed of a pickup driven by journalists, in the driver's seat of a 2002 yellow beetle that was birthed while I was in the NICU, running the hours to Bemidji by topless and withering, weighed down by the heavy boots wet with the river polluted by the French fry factory. When I came home to you, Drunk on lavender sours, we stacked our sadness between the boxes because I had failed once again to not look for love in the gift of another. I traded my lucid dream tea for your turquoise. I touched your soft otter's pelt and asked for you back. You were afraid to shave. It might reveal you a reptile, a box turtle turned inwards again, and my body one you could not fit inside anymore. So you washed her moss agate in solid gold and familiarized a tiny circumference with the shape of your mouth. Finally, I am convinced you belong to another. Yeah! Woo! Anyways, that's it. Um, oh yeah, you can clap. Um, if you want to buy prints, talk to me. If you want to buy something off the walls, talk to Alex. Yeah, thank you, and I love you all. Mwah, mwah, mwah.